So what we have here are two types of current probes and whenever we're making power measurements I personally find the, the current is the hardest thing to measure and that is because there is such a frequency dependence on the probe you're using. So a more cost effective probe is the, um, is the Fluke unit. This is the Fluke I30S and this will do up to 20 amps RMS, um, it's a 10 to 1 probe and I think the frequency is up to about 10 kilohertz or so. That particular probe will go, is good from, I mean, you could, you could do 50 hertz measurements and you can also do DC measurements with it. So you kind of got the lower end frequencies um, very effectively covered with that. The problem is that a lot of these systems that we see, particularly in the free energy world, are much higher frequency. They can go up to 30 kilohertz um, and much, much higher, can go into the megahertz or possibly even more then you get into a very very different ballpark especially when you get into the megahertz region strange things start to happen i find and this is where we would move across to a much better current probe this is a, uh, a stan jeans probe so this one i've actually calibrated using the thermal power probe up to about 10 megahertz um, in other words when i put voltage and current on the, the, across, a resist, across the resistive element within the thermal power probe, there is zero degrees phase difference between the voltage and the current for this particular probe up to 10 megahertz. So you know that with it, whichever system that you're measuring, this probe will be good up to 10 megahertz from about 100 kilohertz, um, uh, 10 kilohertz. So what you've got between these two probes is coverage from DC all the way up to 10 megahertz for any type of power system. And these plug into the oscilloscope? Yep, they both go via BNC to the oscilloscope. And here we have a voltage probe. Now this looks a little bit more complicated than your normal type of um, voltage probe, which you may be familiar with using an oscilloscope via BNC. The reason why it looks a little bit more complicated is because you've got this box of electronics. A very common problem I found when I first started making measurements was that as you're trying to measure voltage um, through the through the ground wire through the ground connection, it was grounding through the oscilloscope, and whether you probed the system or not made a complete difference to your power output. So, for example, if you had a light bulb, as soon as you put the probe on, the light would either dim or get brighter, usually dim. So there was a big problem with the grounding. So what I purchased was the Agilent um, uh, differential probe. So there is no, what this allows you to do is to not have any type of uh, grounding through the oscilloscope and it references uh, the voltage, uh, one, one voltage level to another within the probe itself. So that means you can use this particular voltage probe. And I think it goes quite high in frequency as well, up, into the, uh, up to 25 megahertz from DC. So it's a fabulous probe, um, very, very useful and I use them for everything. An alternative to that is to use an oscilloscope which has independently grounded channels, um, but they are expensive. Uh, I mean, this unit is also quite expensive, but not as expensive as an oscilloscope. So I would recommend this for certainly a lot of the uh, power measurements we use on the free energy devices. Another problem, people, when they want to make accurate power measurements using an oscilloscope, say well it's expensive you do need a digital oscilloscope I personally find because you need to make your voltage measurement you need to make your current measurements you need to multiply those two waveforms together using a maths function and then you need to take the mean value of that maths function to get the power output and it's the power that matters because that will take into consideration phase but you, buying an oscilloscope can be difficult especially a digital one so what you've got is a very cost-effective solution here, which is the Pico Technology Scope. This is the Pico Scope 2000 series. This is the cheapest of the cheap. This is a hundred bucks, but what you've got is you can plug this into your uh, into your um, PC via USB cable, and then you can uh, connect your voltage and current probes to it. And 
In addition, you can also connect, uh, use it as a waveform generator up to about 10 kilohertz, which is often very useful. So then you are relying on the software on the PC to do all your power measurements, which is excellent. The, the software is updated periodically. So you have such a, a high level of certainty with the power measurements you're making. And it's very a cost-effective solution. And as you can see, if you're traveling around, it's a great solution for that as well. So talk to me about frequency. There's, a, there's always two things. There's the gigahertz, whatever, and then there's the other one. And both of them are always confusing. So uh, from your knowledge base, just explain to me what that number represents. Why does it matter? Do, can I get the cheapest 50 megahertz one? Yep. You know. Okay. Well, this, um, this is the 100 buck version. If you turn around the back, you can see that you've got a bandwidth of 10 megahertz. Well, I can't think of too many free energy devices I've measured which go above 10 megahertz. Also, when you get into that level of frequency, for example, if you move your body too close to the system, everything gets affected because you become part of the system. From so, the, from the capa stray capacitors. Right, right, exactly. And, you know, if it's too close to the table, is the table metal, it gets very, very messy. So. I find that most of these devices are working in the mid dozens of kilohertz region, so this is more than good enough for that particular frequency range.